Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Muhammad Ali Hamza and welcome to the third lecture of strategic management. In the first two lectures, I talked about what is strategic management and its importance for an organization. In the previous lectures, I also talked about strategic formulation and we looked into first step and that was mission statement. If you want to revise that lecture, click up here. Today, we will be talking about the second step of strategic formulation and that is internal audit. Yes. Internal audit is a step in which we look into the internal resources of an organization. The internal audit is supervised by RBV theory. RBV is a resource-based view theory that says that if internal resources are valuable, that can give us a competitive advantage and we can handle the external threats nicely and we can optimally encash the opportunities. Yes, resource-based view. To be valuable, mean if you want your internal resources to be valuable, those have to be rare, not easily imitable, and should not be easily substitutable. You can read about RBV in the recommended book. But today I'm going to talk about how to do the internal audit. The first thing is, as I said, internal audit is inspecting or seeing or looking into your internal resources. It means you have to see the strengths and the weaknesses of your internal resources. Those are physical, structural and human. And what you do is that initially in the step one, you look into each function of an organization separately and you collect a list of internal resources with the strengths and weaknesses. For example, there are six, seven basic functions of any organization. And you know that. That is management, marketing, finance, R&D, MIS, production operation. And if you provide or offer services, that is service operations. So what you do is in the step one, each function individually and separately looks into the internal resources of that function, mean list down the strengths and weaknesses and collect them and make a pool. Out of that huge pool of strengths and weaknesses, we pick the most important, relevant and which organization considered most vital for it and make the key factors. That is called internal key factors. So among, for example, if there are seven functions and each function contains 10 internal resources, strengths and weaknesses. So there are 70 totals so out of 70. We pick out 10 to 20 key internal factors that includes the key strengths and weaknesses of an organization. And remember, we pick these key internal factors on the basis of the relevance and vitality for an organization. The second step is to evaluate these factors. And that is called internal factor evaluation. And to perform internal factor evaluation, we use internal factor evaluation metrics. How do we do it? So I will just give you a brief and short understanding of it. And later on, you can go through your recommended book. In the internal factor evaluation matrix, there are four columns. Column number one includes the list of internal key factors. Those are strengths and weaknesses of an organization. The second column includes weight. Weight signifies importance. And what we do is we assign each factor a weight and the sum of total weights I mean of all the factors should lead to 100. So we divide or split the 100 score among all the given factor as per their importance. So the more the number assigned to any or the weight is assigned to any factor is considered to be more important factor. And once we assign the weights from 1 to 100, we divide, I mean we use the arithmetic function division and we divide each one, each assigned weighted score by 100 and we come up with the decimal score. So the total number of the decimal score should be 1. That shows that your scoring and your arithmetic function is properly done. If the total sum does not reach to 1, there is some problem and we need to correct that. So in the second column, we assign weight on the basis of importance. Importance means that particular factor is too much vital. 
definitely these are internal key factors all the factors are important but among these key factors there are some more important than the others in the third column we assign rates rates is actually the reaction we give to each factor and it is from one to four one mean very low response to that factor and four mean very high response or high reaction of an organization in the rate we actually try to figure it out that how nicely we are corresponding to the weight for example if we consider one weight very important but we realize that our reaction to that factor is too low it means that the rate is not corresponding with the weight and we need to fix something up either we need to lower down the importance of that factor or we need to gauge up the uh, reaction or response to that factor from an organization anyways we assign a score to each factor from one to four one the lowest response the four is the highest response and in between in the fourth column we multiply the rate and the assigned decimal weight and we come up with the weighted score and that weighted score ranges from one to four if the weighted score is lower than two it means that internally we are not responding and taking good care of that strength or a weakness and if the weighted score is moving from two to four it means we are accordingly responding and taking care of that factor at the end what we do is we sum up all the weighted score and we come up with the total weighted score now total weighted score represents how nicely we are taking care of our internal key factors or we can say that internal resources are poorly done or nicely done total weighted score also ranges from one to four if the total weighted score is two or less than two it means that we are poorly managing our internal resources and if the score is moving from two to four the higher the number or the closer to the four it means that nicely we are looking after to our internal resources now i am sure this is slightly complex but once you will perform an exercise you will realize it's not that difficult to perform internal factor evaluation there is an intuitive action and there is solid numbers we use them both once you do it you will understand that it's not that hard as it seems probably now the next question that must generate in your minds naturally is where do we or how do we use this all information that we have tried for means we collected internal key factors we did the evaluation of all them and we came up certain scores and certain numbers how are we going to use them that's what i'm going to tell you in the future lectures that where can we or how can we use this information in future but remember internal factor evaluation if not performed seriously correctly and rigorously the future results or the future usage would be not that beneficial you have to spend more time on internal factor evaluation than the coming sections why because in the future whatever we'll talk about will be basically depending on this internal factor evaluation metrics so if it is done poorly the future results or the future predictions of strategic planning will lead you incorrectly that's all for today i will inbox you the portion of recommended book that will include the review question assignment exercises and case i will also share with you the powerpoint presentation of this lecture which will help you to understand the concept better if you are not my direct student you can simply subscribe this channel write your email in the comment box below and you will get the material and if you cannot comment down here you can send me an email over here or you can request the information and material through facebook so that's it stay safe stay learning